Is this tall enough? Yeah, we're good. How is everybody? It was a dollar at the Goodwill. And so were the, so were the pants. Alrighty, so uh, this poem is entitled Home. The day I stopped realizing I could no longer write poetry came during the crisp air of October winds and between gulps of untamed vodka sipped from glass jars by a fireplace somewhere someone called home. I was not one of these people. I have been searching for home for far too long now. Barefoot and cold, I searched in between raindrops pulled from December skies and in the pages of ancient trees paint, printed with foolish words somebody had the audacity to call literature. I thought I could find it in the heartbeat of another boy, but sharing pulses with someone who is the same gender as me in public frightens my labyrinth of a mind scarred with a childhood of abuse watching a family disguised as love produce a, a people of strangers, foreign and abandoned. The house I grew up in is littered with lies and a facade of dreams painted with a gray tone, framed with black window shutters. These walls held a little boy taught that his God loved him, and every December brought false traditions of desires shattered the next morning when his father was yet again snoring on the leather couch in the living room, and his mother was angrily scribbling her type of poetry, chores onto lists for his brothers and sisters while they slept in their warm covers for as long as they could. It provided the only love that they could find in their lives. I learned very quickly in this life that words are the most gorgeous gift from any God above, but you can't truly put them in definitions because this is not family. You can tell me that this is not family. The Christmas tree has, left, been, been, has been left burning in the frost-licked Nebraskan window. The fireplace still whispers embers of wishes, and I clutch my teddy bear, eyes closed, begging for something impossible. The Fourth of July licorice remains uneaten. Easter jelly, bean, jelly beans scatter the floor of a barren room, and in the corner, a little boy cries, clutching his teddy bear. He never named it. He was too scared to put anything tangible in his heart. No wonder the little boy forgot the inside of a church and the care of a God who never seemed to answer him. And some time later, this little boy, he thought that he found his home. He thought he found it in poetry notebooks, but he was never satisfied with the words that he wrote. And eventually he stopped writing in fear of the sound of his mind. He found out that some things are left better unsaid, are, left, are better left unsaid. But for him, all things were left better inside, better left inside. Until one night, he decided to try again, to visit the cosmos of blank pages and cursive etched in lead. The little boy lays on a couch next to the fireplace in an apartment where his father and him now live. The Christmas tree is lit again this year, but while his father is upstairs with a woman that is not his mother, somewhere in Omaha, Nebraska, the little boy forces bad poetry onto unwanting pages as I listen to my words and in my thoughts, I think to myself, who would even miss me?